Good morning. Our Christmas Mass schedule appears in today's bulletin and is posted on the parish website. Because of the limited numbers allowed at each Mass, we will be celebrating 10 Masses in English and two in Spanish, using both the church and the multi-purpose room. Sign-ups for Christmas will open on Monday, December 14th, and will remain open until December 22nd. See the bulletin for all of our Christmas season sign-up opportunities. Call the worship office if you have any questions.
rejoice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. St. Paul encourages us to do what is good and to resist evil. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries.
Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul tells us today to rejoice always. To rejoice. You know, there's something great about that word, rejoice. Even in its sound, it gives you this great feeling that there's something to celebrate. And no matter where we are in our lives, we always have something to celebrate and something to be grateful for. So on this, the third Sunday of Advent, we light the rose candle, a time of rejoicing because we know that the light of Christ is so near. It's only one of the two weekends in the church's calendar that I can dress up like a Pepto-Bismol bottle, and most people will give me strange looks. But it is that time for us to rejoice. St. Paul challenges us, though, that when we rejoice, we don't quench the spirit. We don't quench the spirit. We don't stop the spirit. Because sometimes when we stop the spirit, the spirit of joy, the spirit of happiness, 
We all of a sudden become curmudgeons. We all of a sudden start to complain. But the Spirit of God brings us joy and happiness. It brings us fulfillment. And you know, joy is not just a feeling or an emotion. Joy is a knowledge of knowing that even in the midst of a crazy pandemic, even in the midst of the world's unrest, even in the midst of darkness, God is with us. That God has taken us by the hand. That God journeys with us, the true light of the world. We, like John the Baptist, we are called to testify to that light. We are called to testify to what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. And if we are people of faith, if we are people who acknowledge Jesus as our Savior, as God of heaven and earth, there is plenty to testify about, about how God has changed our lives. How in the moments of darkness, God was there. In the moment of despair, God was there. In the moment of sickness of our loved ones or death of a loved one, God was there. Offering us his compassion, offering us his forgiveness, offering us his love and mercy. Yes, we are called to testify. We are called to rejoice. And I believe Isaiah the prophet says it best. Isaiah the prophet tells you and I exactly what does it mean to testify. It means because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. At baptism, we were anointed with the Spirit of God. At confirmation, the fullness of God's Spirit came upon us. We are the anointed ones of the Lord. And anointing simply means chosen. And the anointed means the Holy One. And Jesus, of course, who was anointed, allows us to share in that same anointing. And then we are called to do what Jesus did. We are called to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. To tell people of God's tremendous love, to tell them that they can be freed from their sins, they can be freed from their limitations, that they can be healed if they surrender themselves to that same loving God who gives us all hope in the starved world. Yes, we are called to announce a time, a year of favor. 2020 has not been a very favorable year for the world. And yet we know that in the midst of this darkness and pandemic, we know that God's love is there. We can see the goodness of God's people when they reach out to help those who are need, in need. When they reach out and work in hospitals, put themselves at risk in order to care for our loved ones. When they protect our streets, our nation laying down their lives so that we can be safe. We see it in so many generous people who try and help the poor in any way that they can, whether it be through food, clothing, shelter. Yes, those realize the Spirit of God is upon them. They know that they have been anointed. They know that they were sent to bring those glad tidings, to heal, to proclaim, to release and to announce. We are all called to do that. And if each of us does our little part, can you imagine what this world would look like? That's how we prepare for the Lord's coming. We need to prepare our hearts. The candles on the Advent wreath are almost complete. We are rejoicing because we know the coming of the Lord is so near. We have plenty of time now, two weeks left, to prepare ourselves. How can we prepare ourselves? I think the scriptures are the best way to do that. Perhaps open the Bible. Read the infancy narratives that talk about Jesus' birth. 
Read the prologue, which is the beginning of the Gospel of John, which talks about the Word, talks about the light coming in the darkness. All of that should give us great joy and reason to rejoice. So today, let us then do as the Apostle Paul told the Thessalonians. Rejoice, praise always, don't stop. And everything we do, do in thanksgiving. For God's love is so great, and we too are called to testify to our loving God. With our hearts rejoicing, let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified with the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pray with humility, joy and thanksgiving, we remember the poor, the brokenhearted, and all who are imprisoned by the challenges of life. Our response throughout Advent will be, give us new hope. For all members of the church who are anointed to bring glad tidings to the world, for joy as we participate in the mission of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord, give, give us, us new, new hope. hope. For those in prison are all held captive by false ideologies, for solidarity with those who stand up for freedom, peace, and justice, we pray to the Lord. Give us new hope. For those whose hearts or spirits are broken by this pandemic, for victims of fear and ignorance, for the unemployed, the poor, and the homeless, we pray to the Lord. Give us new hope. For the recipients of our Advent giving, for those who will wait Christmas in fear or in the darkness of despair, for tranquility and happiness throughout our world, we pray to the Lord. Give us a new hope. For those who suffer mentally, physically, or emotionally in our world today, especially those named in the parish bulletin and on our parish website, for strength and hardship and comfort in their suffering, we pray to the Lord. Give us new hope. We remember our beloved dead, especially the thousands who are dying each day from the coronavirus. And for those who mourn the passing of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. Give us new hope. Jesus, you are hope for our world. Unite us this Advent as we work to become more like you. May we restore your kindness and give voice to your truth. May we pray with humility, joy, and thanksgiving, and courageously say yes to your will, even when it is hard to follow your path. Emmanuel, God with us, fill us with your peace and hope, and in this time of waiting and uncertainty, hold us close in your love. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all at last is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, blaze our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I invite you to bow your heads and to pray for the Lord's blessing. May your people receive your holy blessings, O Lord, we pray, and by that gift spurn all that would harm them and obtain what they desire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. The Spirit of God is upon us. Go in peace and in joy. Thanks be to God. Amen.